Many aerospace experts agree that SpaceX's Starship HLS mission architecture is one of the most complex ever conceived, mainly because it requires multiple risky in-orbit refueling operations. So, why not just skip the refueling and fly straight to the moon instead? Well, that question sounds even crazier once you realize what Starship actually is, one of the largest spacecraft ever built, designed to carry hundreds of tons of cargo to the moon and even Mars. However, if SpaceX were to use the Starship Nova variant, everything could change. This upgraded version could fly directly from Earth to the moon, a journey of about 384,400 kilometers, without any orbital refueling and still have enough fuel left to land astronauts safely on the lunar surface. So, what exactly is Starship Nova, and how could it possibly make such an ambitious idea a reality? To answer those questions, we need to go back to NASA's early days, a time when some of the wildest ideas in spaceflight history were born. And among them was one that stood out above all, a concept for a massive spacecraft called NOVA. The NOVA rocket was envisioned to carry between 10 and 20 astronauts at once, along with 75 to 100 tons of equipment and supplies. These gigantic landers would touch down entirely on the lunar surface and then launch back into orbit without leaving any hardware behind. A bold plan aimed at building permanent outposts, not just short visits. All of these ahead-of-its-time ideas came from Werner von Braun, the legendary rocket engineer who played a key role in NASA's Apollo program. And it's no surprise that Elon Musk has often cited von Braun as one of his greatest inspirations. When you look at NOVA's original specifications, they sound strikingly familiar, almost like an early blueprint of what Starship has become today. All of this is true. You can actually find the official NOVA launch vehicle documents on NASA's own archives. Take a look. They were all publicly released back in 1963 and 1964, and the level of detail is mind-blowing. NASA engineers even drew out step-by-step -step diagrams showing exactly how the vehicle could be built. According to those early designs, NOVA was a super heavy lift launch vehicle, a three-stage rocket that stood slightly taller than Saturn V, but was much wider in diameter. While Saturn V's first stage measured about 10 meters across, NOVA's enormous first stage would stretch to 15 meters, providing space for gigantic fuel tanks and a massive cluster of engines. That first stage was planned to use eight F1 engines, the same type that powered the Saturn V but grouped together in an even larger cluster, producing an incredible 14 million pounds of thrust. And the second stage? Just as impressive. It was designed to carry eight J-2 engines, generating more than 1.8 million pounds of thrust. The third stage, also powered by J-2, or even larger M-1 engines in some variants, served as the integrated propulsion unit for the lunar lander itself, not a crew compartment but the engine and fuel backbone that allowed the entire 150 to 200 ton lander to descend and ascend intact. With that kind of power, Nova could carry payloads and crews far beyond what Saturn V was capable of. Its projected capabilities included landing 10 to 20 astronauts on the moon in a single mission, along with 60 tons or more of cargo, everything from habitats and rovers to life support infrastructure all housed in a massive, self-contained lander mounted atop the third stage, where the crew lived, worked, and returned using the same vehicle that brought them there, without ever needing orbital refueling or rendezvous. But if the Nova concept was so brilliant, why was it canceled? The answer is surprisingly simple. The Nova project was officially scrapped in 1964, not because of a lack of ambition, but because NASA simply couldn't meet all three critical demands time, cost, and technology. President Kennedy's goal was clear, land a man on the moon before 1970, a race driven by political and technological rivalry with the Soviet Union. But Nova, with its massive diameter, too many engines, the need for new factories, transport canals, and tens of billions of dollars in funding would have taken at least eight to 10 years to develop, far beyond the political deadline. Meanwhile, the Saturn V was smaller, simpler, and built on proven technology from the Jupiter program. The F-1 and J-2 engines were already showing success in early tests. And most importantly, NASA adopted the Lunar Orbit Rendezvous strategy, separating the main spacecraft from a lightweight lunar lander that would meet in lunar orbit. This new approach reduced launch mass by around 70% compared to NOVA's direct ascent method, making the entire mission far more practical. 
Even Werner von Braun, the father of Nova, publicly supported LOR in June 1963, declaring, it's the only way to make it before 1970. And so, NASA shifted all its focus to Saturn V, turning an ambitious dream into a realistic plan. And just five years later, Apollo 11 made history by landing humans on the moon. In short, Nova wasn't a bad idea. It was just too far ahead of its time. That's why Elon Musk could absolutely bring it back to life, in the form of Starship Nova, to make lunar landings easier than ever before. And in many ways, this time it would be much more doable, because Starship already surpasses what Nova was ever designed to achieve. Its fully reusable two-stage architecture stands out, with the Super Heavy Booster as the first stage, powered by 33 Raptor engines. Together, they generate more than 16 million pounds of thrust, easily surpassing the Nova's theoretical 13.9 million pounds from its eight F1 engines. The second stage, Starship itself, carries six vacuum-optimized Raptors, producing 2.8 million pounds of thrust, more than double the power of Nova's second stage, which relied on eight J2 engines generating about 1.86 million pounds. And in the future, this upper stage could even use up to nine Raptors, making it even more powerful. The only major change would be structural instead of the original two-stage configuration. Starship Nova would feature a three-stage design. And interestingly, SpaceX wouldn't even need to add an adapter to dock a third stage on top of the Starship upper stage, because that stage could actually fit inside Starship's massive payload bay. However, building an entirely new third stage would take a lot of time, effort, and money. So instead, the idea is to use the upper stage of another vehicle, like the Centaur 3 used on ULA's Vulcan rocket, which could easily fit within Starship's enormous payload compartment. A Centaur stage, with its slender design and high-efficiency RL-10 engine, could provide valuable flexibility for lunar transfer or interplanetary missions. In fact, by clustering four RL-10 engines together, a modified Centaur upper stage could deliver around 96,000 pounds of thrust, quite an impressive figure by today's standards. However, when compared to the planned third stage of Nova, powered by a single J-2 engine, Centaur falls short. The J-2, which also burns liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, produces far greater thrust, reaching up to 232,000 pounds. This large gap highlights the current limitations of upper stage technology when it comes to achieving the kind of deep space, heavy lift capability envisioned for Nova or a modified Starship. Moreover, even if the size and thrust match, there are still some major drawbacks. For example, Centaur and Starship belong to two different companies, ULA and SpaceX, and direct collaboration between them would be very difficult without a third party, like NASA, acting as a mediator. Moreover, to actually match or surpass Nova's ambitions, any potential third stage added to Starship would likely need to go beyond the existing Centaur-class designs. That could mean reviving high-performance engines like NASA's shelved J-2X, or exploring next-generation nuclear thermal propulsion systems, which NASA already has on its roadmap for future deep space missions. In general, a third stage could save a lot of money. Basically, it would be a smaller starship without the heat shield, aero shell, landing legs, or extra tanks, so it would cost a lot less to build than a full starship slash super heavy system. High Delta V missions aren't super common right now, so it might take a while before the investment really pays off. But with Starship's insanely low launch cost, demand could pick up eventually, even if it takes a few years. Government agencies like NASA and the US Space Force are the main customers for high Delta V missions, like flying directly to geostationary orbit or heading to other planets. They might even help fund the development of this third stage. Aside from the upper stage issue, there's another crucial factor Starship would need to change to truly become a Nova Starship, its choice of propellant. As space agencies and private companies set their sights on building a sustainable human presence on the moon, the choice of fuel becomes a critical part of mission design. For lunar operations, Hydrolox, the combination of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, remains the most practical and efficient option, especially when considering future in situ resource utilization. One of the moon's most valuable natural resources is its vast reserves of water ice, found mainly in the permanently shadowed regions near the lunar poles. 
This ice can be extracted, refined, and split through electrolysis to produce both hydrogen and oxygen, allowing Hydrolox fuel to be manufactured directly on the lunar surface. That capability would drastically reduce the need to haul fuel from Earth, cutting mission costs and enabling long-term lunar operations. In contrast, methane-based engines like SpaceX's Raptor are optimized for Mars missions, where methane can be synthesized from atmospheric carbon dioxide and subsurface ice via the Sabatier process. But since the Moon lacks a carbon-rich atmosphere, producing methane there simply isn't practical. Without the ability to generate local methane, lunar missions relying on methalox engines would face major logistical challenges for return trips and surface operations, as every drop of propellant would have to be transported from Earth, an extremely costly and limiting approach. For that reason, upper stages and landers intended for sustained lunar activity would be far better served by Hydrolox propulsion systems. These engines not only deliver higher performance in the vacuum of space, but could also one day be refueled directly on the moon. Integrating Hydrolox-based propulsion into Starship's architecture, or pairing Starship with a Hydrolox upper stage for lunar missions, would align far more closely with the long-term vision of a self-sufficient lunar infrastructure and permanent human outposts on the moon. Finally, converting Starship into a Nova-class heavy-lift transporter could bring significant advantages for deep space missions, particularly in terms of payload capacity and mission simplicity. A Nova-class Starship variant, whether through increased thrust, a third stage, or both, could deliver 68 tons or more to translunar injection orbit in a single launch, without any in-orbit refueling. That capability instantly outperforms NASA's space launch system which currently delivers a maximum of about 38 tons to TLI. This leap in capability would greatly streamline lunar missions. With just one launch, Starship could carry larger, fully equipped lunar landers, heavy cargo, and multi-astronaut crews, achieving the goals of the original Artemis missions and beyond in far fewer flights.